Hi, I'm Ross Benjamin reporting for the Offshore Gaming Association. That's OSGA.com where you can visit on a daily basis to find your most up-to-date news on the offshore sportsbook industry, where you can find the best bonuses as well as the sportsbooks with the higher grades and most times than not goes hand in hand with getting paid in a timely manner. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, we also uh, cue you in on some sports books to stay away from. Uh, sometimes they lure you in with these big bonuses and then when you go to get paid, you have all kinds of issues in that regard. And you certainly don't wanna go through that. So go to OSGA.com to get all the pertinent information regarding who to deal with and the most credible sports books to uh, do business with. Now I'm gonna to get to my three college football picks on Saturday. I'm going to go with under the radar picks this week. Uh, games that are lower profile and boy oh boy folks over the years I found some good success in going this way. I'm not to say that I don't like any higher profile games this week but sometimes you can find a lot of hidden value in these games. The sports books and it's just human nature when you put 70 plus games up on the board in college football uh, you can't give equal attention to each and every one of them, especially the games that are more lightly bet on. And these are three games I anticipate to fall into that category. Let's start out with the Idaho at South Alabama game. This is an Idaho team that opened with a 28-6 win uh, against Sacramento State in FCS school. The game was played at home. Not an overly impressive win by any stretch of the imagination. Then the following week, they host UNLV as a five-point favorite. They get lambasted by UNLV 44-16. to Remind you, that's the same UNLV team that opened the season with a historic upset loss at the hands of Howard as a 44-point favorite, which marked the largest upset uh, in accordance with point spread values in Las Vegas and across the offshore sportsbook industry. No team has ever lost a game as that big of a favorite in college football history. UNLV did that and then went on the road the following week and just crushed uh, Idaho, uh, the same Idaho team that we're talking about right now who's going to be facing South Alabama on Saturday. South Alabama is a good program, folks. Uh, they don't get a lot of acclaim, but this is the same, same South Alabama team that went on the road at Mississippi State last year and came away with an upset win. Also, South Alabama gave Ole Miss all they can handle for three quarters on the road in their season opener. Didn't fare well against Oklahoma State, but a lot of teams aren't going to fare well against Oklahoma State. Having said that, 44-7 to uh, lost to the Cowboys in retrospect when you look at the other two games that Oklahoma State played and, and the results they got there including last week's crushing win over Pitt uh, not a bad not a bad showing uh, with all things considered for this South Alabama team this is uh, in my mind a very evenly matched game the difference here as I see it is the home field advantage for South of Alabama as well as you're looking at an Idaho team that's at a minus five turnover margin through three games. South Alabama, despite the tough competition, is still plus one in the turnover margin after three games. I'm going to take South Alabama here and lay the three and a half points. As a matter of fact, here's what I would highly recommend, and I always do in this situation. Buy the half a point, buy it down to three. South Alabama, minus three. My next game, Akron at Troy. Akron, you know, the funny team here. Uh, a lot was expected going into the season with a lot of returning starters. But you know what? Returning starters don't make, mean a heck of a lot if they weren't a good team the year before and the talent is suspect to start with and it's shown in the first two games. Yes, they beat an FCS opponent in Arkansas Pine Bluff in their season opener. And a 49-point win is a 48-and-a-half-point favorite. Kudos to them for co covering that large spread. But since then, uh, you're looking at a team that lost, actually, the other two games that they played. Uh, that was the middle game of their three-game set to start the year. 
They play opened the year at Penn State and then lost to Iowa State at home last week, 41 to 14 as a 10-point underdog. The two losses to Iowa State and Penn State, they were outscored 93 to 14 and outgained 1177 to 490 total yards. Not a very good showing when they stepped up in competition. This is a Troy team 2 and 1. Their only loss at Boise State in a game they were very respectable, losing 24-13 uh, and pushing as an 11-point underdog. Uh, not a lot of shame there. And they won their other two games, including last week, a three-point win at New Mexico State on the road. And that's a New Mexico State who's proven to be much better than advertised this year. I like Troy here. Lay the 15 over Akron. Final game. Florida International University takes on Rice, and that game will be played at Rice. FIU coming off an uninspiring 17-10 win over FCS Elkhorn State. That occurred on a Thursday night, folks, and I can give these guys an excuse. These are uh, not even guys. These are young men, 18 to 21 years old, and uh, what was going on at that particular moment is Hurricane Irma was bearing down on South Florida, and it touched land two days later. Uh, while everybody else in the area was evacuating, these kids had to stay and play this game before a sparse crowd, uh, uninspired, and certainly uh, their minds were elsewhere. You know, you got to give them a, a break in that accord. And they, they did win the game 17-10, to 10, and I'll tell you what, I think you're going to see a much better team come Saturday against a... Uh, less than average at best Rice Club. And don't forget Florida International's head coach now, Butch Davis, the former head man at the University of Miami, North Carolina, and also of the Cleveland Browns. So this is an experienced head coach that knows how to get his team ready. And Rice enters this game one and two on the season. Their only win coming over a hapless uh, UTEP squad, who I think won't win a game this year. And another factor here, uh, Rice in their one and two start, minus five turnover margin. And in their two losses against Stanford and Houston, they were outscored by a combined 100 to 10. I'm going to take FIU here. They're currently plus two and a half. Buy them up to three. FIU plus the three. Repeating again, let's take South Alabama, minus three and a half. Buy them down to three. Troy, minus 15. FIU, plus 2.5. Buy them up to 3. Good luck with all your picks this coming weekend. Until we talk again, I wish you all the best.